garlic is a great crop that most gardeners can grow. And you don't have to just grow it in your garden beds. You have a lot of other options. Join me today as I show you how to grow garlic in containers. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and recently I just had my first frost of autumn. And it's that first fall frost that is the trigger point for many gardeners to start planting garlic. And I'm going garlic crazy this year, or I should say next year, because all of the garlic that I'm going to be starting in fall, I won't be harvesting until mid-summer. It's an easy plant to grow, but it does take a long time. These two beds are filled with garlic cloves, close to 300 cloves this year. But that's not enough because I want to grow more, and I want to grow it a little bit closer to the house. That's where containers come in. If you don't have a big garden with lots of extra space to grow garlic, container gardening might be a good alternative. If you don't have a garden at all, but you have a space with full sun, well, then a container could be the option that you choose to grow your garlic. Today, I'll show you step-by-step -step process that I use to fill these containers with soil, and then most importantly, with the cloves that will turn into beautiful garlic bulbs that I'll harvest next year. The containers I've chosen for my garlic include just regular plastic buckets, some cloth grow bags, and they'll be filled with a variety of soilless potting mixes, most of which I have left over from a video I did earlier this year where I compared the results of different types of potting mix. The garlic that I'll be planting are a few hardneck varieties that I harvested three months ago. These are the ones that I planted a year ago. Let grow, harvested, saved, and now they're going to go back into these containers as new plants. Now you have a choice with your garlic, hardneck or softneck. I live in Colorado Zone 5B. For me, hardneck varieties will survive my harsh winters a little bit better than softneck varieties. I do grow softneck varieties, but when it comes to container gardening, for severe winters, the hardneck varieties tend to do better. If you live in zone eight or above, you'll be able to follow this same process and grow in containers. And for you, it's probably going to be the softneck varieties that you choose. I'm going to begin filling my containers with an inexpensive potting mix. This is labeled as garden soil. It consists of nothing more than peat moss, cocoa core, forest products, which is just ground up wood, and perlite, with a little bit of fertilizer thrown in. The cheap mix is going in the bottom half of my containers. Garlic is relatively shallow rooted, so you don't need really good potting mix to fill the entire container. The container should be at least eight to 10 inches deep, just to make sure that there's enough room for those roots to grow. And as I showed in that test of potting mixes, even the cheap stuff will grow plants. It's just a way to save some money. You don't have to waste expensive potting mix in an area where the plants aren't going to be growing. You want a well-draining mix in your container. And to help, I've drilled holes in the bottom of these plastic buckets. In these cloth bags, well, the cloth is going to allow for drainage. If the garlic sits in soggy soil over the course of the winter, there's a good chance it's going to rot. So you wanna make sure that whenever you have rainfall or snow or when you water, any excess moisture has a place to drain out. Now I'll just start filling these containers, pouring this mix in. The exact depth, is not that important. I'm just trying to fill some of the empty space 
in the lower half. You can see that this cheap mix has a lot of big chunky pieces. This won't interfere too much with the root development, but it is possible that the big chunks could interfere with the bulb development. For the top half of the containers, I'm using a higher quality mix. Mixes that don't have the big chunks, they tend to be finer, and like this happy frog, there's more perlite to allow for drainage. They also have additional fertilizer. And so by getting a potting mix that already has the fertilizer blended into it, that's one less thing you have to worry about it. It should be enough to promote and support the growth of the garlic during its life cycle until you harvest it. I'll add this mix to the containers, but I don't want to fill them all the way to the top. I want to allow at least three to four inches, because as I'll show you in a little bit, I'll be mulching the top of these containers. The total depth of the soil in these containers is just over nine inches. It will settle a little bit as you water it and as it sits for about the next nine months, but that's not a problem because as I look at the roots of the garlic that I harvested, it only extends about two inches below the plant. The bulb itself is about two inches as well. So you're looking for a depth of four up to five inches that you're going to need for the bulbs to fully develop. The next step is to begin preparing these bulbs for planting. We're not planting the whole bulb, we're going to separate out the individual cloves and that's what we're planting. For the cloves that you buy, the top will already be cut off. For the garlic that I've saved, I've just saved a step and left this shoot in place. This is the stock, and so when we talk about hard neck garlic, this is hard. It's very woody and hard to break, and extends all the way down to the roots. So as I start breaking apart the cloves, what I'm left with is this hard neck attached to the roots. I separate out the cloves, and these are what I'm going to be planting in my container. A general guideline for planting most bulbs is to plant them twice their height. And that holds true for garlic as well. So for this garlic that's just under two inches tall, I need to plant it about four inches deep. And that's the bottom at the four inch point so that we have four inches down the bulb, and about two inches of soil on top of that. We want to put the garlic in with the flat side down. The part that was attached to the roots is the bottom. The pointy part is the top. We want to separate out the garlic cloves about four to six inches apart for most of the garlic we're growing. That will allow for adequate bulb development. When it comes to figuring out what all this means as far as the measurements, you can use a tape measure. I actually like to use a trowel like this that has the measurements on it. With a trowel like this, that means I can use these measurements to get an idea of the spacing of these cloves. Or I can use my tape measure to accomplish the same thing. Or I know that my finger from the tip to the top knuckle is four inches. So this is a quick way for me to make sure I get the spacing right. This is an 11 inch diameter pot. So you can see that I can easily put five garlic cloves in it. When it comes to the planting depth, I can go down the four inches that I need and just put the clove to the bottom of the trowel and it's planted. Or, an easy way because I've done this so many times, I know that 
my fingertip to my knuckle is two inches. The total depth is four inches. So if I take a clove like this, hold it at the top and just push it down to that knuckle, I know that the top is two inches below the surface of the soil. This makes for really fast and easy planting. In this bigger grow bag, I was able to get eight cloves around the outside and three cloves in the middle. And these are actually two different types of garlic. A purple garlic on the outside and a white hardneck on the inside. The planting is exactly the same. Just pushing it in at the spot where I laid it out because I laid the cloves with the proper spacing. And in almost no time, you've got planted garlic. After breaking apart the bulb, you'll need to decide which of the cloves to plant. Plant the biggest cloves. I have three cloves here that are small in relation to the rest of the cloves that came in the bulb. So all of the ones that I planted on the outside are the same variety, and it's the same variety as these three. But because these three cloves were noticeably smaller, I chose not to plant these. I'll use these in the kitchen. That's why I went with a different variety on the inside, because I had bigger cloves, and I know they're going to give me bigger bulbs. I have six nice, big, beautiful cloves. I'm going to go ahead and use my green stock for planting these. Now, the green stock is simply a vertical container gardening system. I'm only going to put one clove in each of these cells because I can't give more spacing than that in this green stock leaf tower. But it's just a different type of container that will allow me to grow my garlic. With the garlic cloves planted, now it's no different than any seed or plant or bulb. I'm going to water in these new cloves and the soil very well. Now I'm using my watering can because this will be the primary source of water for these plants as they grow. This is just outside my kitchen door and I need to make sure that I keep this soil evenly moist. One of the things about growing in containers is that the soil tends to dry out much faster than an in-ground or raised garden bed. And so I'll definitely have to water these probably every day in spring and summer, but I may also need to water them during winter because I want to make sure they don't dry out. I don't need to worry about watering the garlic during the depths of winter when this soil is probably going to freeze because that's not a problem. Most garlic can handle temperatures down to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minus 35 degrees Celsius. Growing garlic in zone four and even below is possible. When it comes to containers, Warmer is definitely better, so you might want to put these in a sheltered area if you get very, very cold winter temperatures. But until those temperatures come, I want to keep this soil moist because what's going to happen right now is these cloves are going to start growing. They're going to start growing roots. The reason I do this at about the time that I have my first frost is because I'm going to give these plants about four, maybe even six weeks for the roots to develop. That's not enough time for them to actually grow into a plant. So by the time those freezing conditions come, the clove is going to go dormant and no more growth will happen with the roots. And then as these containers warm up in spring, they're going to wake up, they'll send out that shoot and they'll start growing bigger. 
to help with the moisture levels of these containers and to help insulate the soil a little bit in those cold winter temperatures. The next step is to mulch these containers. For the mulch, I'm using a couple things. I'm using some crushed leaves that I've saved exactly for this purpose. And then I'll also be using straw. I like to blend my mulches because in my windy areas, having both the leaves and the straw together really helps hold together. The different sizes tend to meld pretty well and I don't have as much blowing away as I do if I don't blend it. I'll go ahead and add another layer of the crushed leaves. And you can see why I left that space at the top of the container, because I knew that the mulch was going to fill it. And so because it's a little bit lower than the top, it's also less likely to blow away. And then of course, I'll water in the mulch to help it settle and to add extra moisture to these containers so that these garlic cloves can start growing. If you have garlic bulbs to plant but are getting a late start, maybe you missed that ideal window and the soil is already starting to freeze, it might be too late in your garden beds, but it's not too late in containers. This could be your salvation. Go ahead and take those garlic cloves, plant them in your containers, and then keep your containers in a sheltered area that doesn't get those freezing conditions. They don't need sunlight. There's no photosynthesis. They just need the soil temperature to remain above freezing for that first four weeks so that the roots develop. And then after that period, you can gradually start moving your containers outside into the cold winter conditions and let them go dormant and stay outside for the winter. You don't have to miss out on your garlic season just because you're getting a late start. I think containers are a great option. And if you're garlic crazy like me or have limited space, think about growing your garlic in containers. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>